Pavel, I'll start with you. To, to what extent do you think, uh, as I just framed it, this decline this week is because of coronavirus cases fears versus election fears? And, and, and how much of an impact do you think a, a Joe Biden presidency could have on the sector and on the commodity? The drop in oil prices <clears throat> is 100 percent tied to the second wave or perhaps third wave of, of COVID. Look, we had two of the G7 economies, Germany and France, go back into lockdown. Uh, a lot of smaller countries, Poland, Austria, parts of the UK, parts of Illinois uh, doing the same thing. Uh, this is bound to have a negative impact on demand. There, there is no escaping it. The oil market will have to get past this uh, really critical phase of the pandemic, uh, get past the winter time before um, sustaining its recovery into the spring and, and summer of next year. The next 100, 120 days uh, are going to be uh, tough. Stuart, when you look uh, at the uh, options to invest in, and particularly the majors like Exxon and Chevron, have they priced a lot of this in? Uh, that's a good question. I, I think that, you know, pretty much the whole space is under pressure, obviously. Uh, there's been very few places to hide. The natural hedge that integrateds normally provide, where you have, if upstream is suffering, perhaps downstream or chemicals is going to do better. That is not the case this time around. Uh, Exxon pointed out uh, that, you know, relative to the 10-year ranges, every business segment they have is doing poorly. So I, I think that, um, yes, the shares are under pressure, but we think there are better places to look th than being in the integrateds at this point. Pavel, back to the election for a moment, because energy has really become a critical issue in swing states like Pennsylvania and Ohio. And, and the Trump administration is campaigning on the fact that it is better for energy and that and that Biden would shut down fracking and impose regulations. And, and you know, his messages have certainly been mixed on that front. But we went back and thank you, Melody Myers, for doing the work here and looked at oil production under the Obama administration, granted this was over two terms, it rose 75 percent in this country. Under Trump administration, his, his only term, 23 percent higher. So does it really have anything to do with who's president? And, and would Joe Biden necessarily be bad, given that track record? It has practically nothing to do with who is president and everything to do with the global commodity cycle. Look, the number of rigs drilling for oil right now in the United States is close to its lowest level since the days of Rockefeller and Standard Oil 100 years ago. That is an amazing statistic. Now, is that because Trump is not sufficiently supportive of fossil fuels? Of course not. It's because we have a global pandemic that has caused the worst demand destruction in the oil market in modern history. So on top of that, uh, we have the fact that many oil and gas companies are trying to be more disciplined with capital, preserve their balance sheets. This started even before COVID years ago. You put those two things together, and there is simply not the same level of appetite to drill as there, uh, as there had been, you know, for example, in, in Obama's first term. By the way, Biden has made it clear he is not aiming to ban fracking you know, on, on a national scale, but even if he wanted to, uh, that would be highly unlikely to stand up in court. So a bit of a moot point. Stuart, if we get through the election uh, smoothly next week and the market starts to focus again uh, on high expectations for a large stimulus package, whether it's in weeks or months, would that be enough to boost oil prices again and boost with it some of the, uh, the oil majors or or is that uh, not really linked because of the supply-demand equation for the commodity itself? Uh, no, I, I think it's really a supply and demand situation. I think that the conversation is going to turn to policy. Uh, if we do end up with a Biden administration, um, I, I agree that I, I don't think a, a ban in fracking is in the cards. But you could see uh, some levers being pulled with respect to um, energy tax policy uh, and with respect to um, the willingness to continue uh, issuing permits to drill on federal land. So there are EMPs out there that have more exposure than others uh, to, you know, to, to federal land. And many of them do have, you know, uh, in hand a couple of years worth of permits. So it's probably not an immediate effect. But I think those are the, the those are going to be the bigger drivers from a policy perspective. And of course, what happens with supply and demand for crude is going to be the dominant uh, factor in in where we go from here with crude oil prices. 
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.